Andy Posda is with us now. He was nominated to be Labour Secretary, so, and you didn't make it. My question is, Andy, <laughs> were you the victim of vicious attacks from the left? Well, there were, there were vicious attacks from the left, not only in the press, which was, uh, which was really horrible, the way that they dealt with the stories and dealt with the truth, but we also had, uh, there was an envelope left at my house addressed to my wife that had white powder, a paper doll with a noose around its neck, and a pink sheet of construction paper that said Trump on it. Uh, we ended up with guys in hazmat suits at our house that night and the, uh, it, an FBI um, terrorist task force. Now, none of that got covered in the press at the time, uh, but it was, uh, it, w it was quite a big deal in our neighborhood. So, it, yeah, there, w there, was a, there were a lot of those kinds of things. That is just outrageous. But look, thank you very much for sharing that with us, Andy, because I was sure. not aware of that in the background, not aware of it. I want to move on to President Trump's proposal. It's a budget proposal, which allocates $90 million in grants, grants for apprenticeships. Now, that doesn't seem to me like a whole lot of money. What do you say? It's about, what, it's about what Obama was going to spend. President Obama's administration, Secretary Perez, were going to spend on apprenticeships. But the important thing isn't how much the government spends. It's how effectively the government spends it. What we need to do, and I, what I think uh, Alex Acosta will do, and I know the president, Reed Cordish, Ivanka Trump are all behind doing, is coordinating more with the private sector so we can make those dollars go further. It's really the, the private sector that needs to engage in apprenticeships, uh, internships, vocational training, to try and fill the jobs that they have where they can't, bring pe they can't find the people yep. to fill the jobs. So it, it's not the amount of money that's spent. I think it's how they're going to spend that money in coordination with the private sector. I think it can work. I think it can be very effective. Well, I think that's the important factor. If these, these uh, training schemes are run by the companies which will ultimately hire these youngsters with the skills, that's a very, very different thing from pumping government money into government-run yep. technical training schemes, which actually have a very low achievement record, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there was a study in 2012 that showed that the achievement record of these federal programs was very low. And look, the private sector, they know where the jobs are. They know what skills they need. They're anxious to get people to fill those positions. Why not take the federal dollars, spend them in conjunction with the private spec sector to make them far more expansive so that they're worth a lot more? It's, this isn't about empowering government. It's about creating jobs for Americans. There are a lot of jobs out there. We just need to get the people um, who need those jobs trained in the skills that the jobs require, and then we can start seeing labor participation rates go down, which are about, yeah. the, only, about the only economic indicator that hasn't significantly improved so far. And it is also a way of plugging the skills gap without leaving youngsters saddled with 30, 40, 50, 60,000 bucks worth of debt. Very good point. You don't have the expense, not only do you not have the expense, of a college education and the incredible amount of money now that you have to bar borrow, particularly at the better schools, but you actually get paid while you're going through an apprenticeship. So you, you will have some income. It's not going to be the kind of income you'll have once you're through the program, but you get paid and you don't incur debt. So this is, it's a positive in all respects. And we need to change the president getting behind this and his daughter getting behind it really should change the attitude in America about these jobs. There's jobs in welding. There's construction jobs. These are there are jobs in manufacturing. There are, even though the number of manufacturing jobs has come down in the United States, the number of openings in, in manufacturing positions has actually increased. So we need to get people so they want those jobs, they understand they're out there, they understand they're, they're good paying, and that there's honor in every job, and yes. there's dignity in every Precis job. Precisely. Quit looking down on people who work with yep. their hands. Thank you very much. Andy Posda, thanks for joining us, sir. Always appreciate it. Glad to be here, Stuart. Yes, Thank you. The man